Hi, hello, thank you so much for clicking on my channel. If you are fascinated by true crime, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Right here, Tea Time True Crime with Katie, we go over true crime in a different kind of way. Unfortunately, I have a case uh, that is a missing persons case. So automatically, please know that this is not 100% in stone. Uh, we still need some answers. So if this is not your kind of podcast, uh, definitely click out because I'm going to be doing some trigger warnings as well. Now, I do want you guys to kind of watch this or see this, but if it's very upsetting, share it. Uh, perhaps we can get more eyes on this case and also make sure it doesn't turn into a cold case. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoy my title page. I like to give some kind of good vibes by showing my babies, my fur babies. Um, so before I go any more and before the story, I want to talk about uh, something that I really like. And you probably heard of this before, but I mostly love the person who is selling this product. Um, I am wearing paparazzi. Look how cute that is. Yeah. And paparazzi, if you haven't heard, it's like, for me, it's like costume jewelry. You know, it's nickel and lead free, which is like, thank goodness. Um, and it's $5. So I know inflation is bad. I know, you know, we women can't like, or men, you know, or they, whatever your pronouns may be, um, can't go and buy like $300 earrings or something like that. So when I watch her lives, um, her name is Leah Foster. She is just awesome, awesome, awesome. I will put her link in the description below if you want to order from her shop or check out her lives because I'm telling you, if you're having a crap day, go watch her lives. You will smile. You will laugh. She has these cool games called like Blingo, you know, like bingo, but it's like blingo and she's just a really really good person so if you want to help small business and you know help a really cool person that pretty much i don't know she she, she just should get recognized more because she's a really wonderful person um check her out it's paparazzi and definitely check out her lives so oh yeah and spoil yourself too because when you see those cute you know earrings and stuff you're like five dollars oh i got this so it's real fun just to like sprint out an outfit like i'm just wearing like a like um it's not like it's like a sports bra slash tank top who knows? But I dressed it up by wearing these really cute little earrings that give me Cinderella carriage vibes. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, and then, you know, green for abundance, good vibes, because we're going to need good vibes talking about this case because I'm going to be talking about perhaps corruption, drugs, uh, just cases that may be linked together. Yeah. All right, you guys. Now, before I go on, I'm going to be talking about Samantha Sperry. Actually, Samantha Rose Sperry. Now, a lot of this is speculation, uh, which is kind of insane because none of this makes sense. Uh, it's quite bizarre. I will tell you what some theories are and also what I think what happened. Um, but as you know, I will have a description linked below uh, to the Facebook channel, well, the Facebook group for Samantha Sperry's uh, family. This happened in uh, March 27th, 2018, and the family is so scared that it's going to go cold. So let's talk about Samantha Sperry. She was 25 years old when she went missing. She was born August 20th, 1992. So yes, she's on the cusp, but she is still a Leo queen. Now, as I research about her, she seemed like almost a typical Leo. Uh, she's very stubborn, outspoken, um, but yet had a big heart. She was the sunshine in a lot of people's lives. In fact, her 
disappearance has affected Kentucky and so many other places around Kentucky, it's pretty incredible. She worked at McDonald's, so I'm, you know, there were some regulars and they miss her funny, sassy, you know, no whole bars attitude. Um, so Samantha, I feel like is somebody who would just not take crap from anybody. Um, I feel that, you know, already I'm going to talk about drug use and the family was very suspicious of the police department because Samantha did get up and uh, mixed up in drugs when she was younger, uh, methamphetamine and methamphetamine. This all happened in Kentucky. Meth and marijuana I don't like to put them two together, but they are te technically drugs. Uh, but methamphetamine, that that's a whole different different ball game. She was sober. She went to rehab. Um, she was for about six years. She got she was married and she had two children that absolutely adored their mother, and she adored them as well. In fact, the kids are getting older and they're asking questions, and sadly, the family cannot answer them. I mean, what do you say? In fact, people now are just saying that she got lost in the woods. I'm like, what? Is she Red Riding Hood? What are you talking about? What I mean by that, guys, Samantha Sperry um, lived where, you know, she lived like around those woods, you know, in Kentucky, in that area, uh, for all of her life. So her being lost in the woods in like, I mean, it wasn't a really small area of woods, but it's, I don't think it's big enough for you to get lost for days. Oh yeah, we're going there. It just gets weird people. It, it really does. So as I said, Samantha had a boyfriend. Um, well, she was married, you guys, but unfortunately she was going through a separation, divorce, something like that. And there was like um, a custody battle. And I did look into the husband because, you know, cu custody battles are definitely mo motive for murder. Um, but the husband had like nothing on him. And I don't think he would hurt the mother of his children. Uh, the family do not does not think he had anything to do with it. But her boyfriend though, Ren Hendri Hendrickson? Yeah. This this case, like I said, since there is no like real concrete evidence of like what is happening, it's very frustrating. So, unfortunately, a lot of this is speculation. But they say that Ren and Samantha knew each other for a long time, like since they were kids, they went to school together. In fact, she may have dated him in high school. Now, Ren's family, even Ren, had a very long rap sheet. So he was definitely a bad boy. Um, and not the, not, not the sexy kind. He was, he was uh, mixed up in drugs, assault. I mean, like I said, his rap sheet goes, you know, a mile away. There is an interview with him, which I'm going to tag uh, below. It's about 40 minutes. And I could tell that he was like, I don't know, it's hard. He was stammering a little bit, you guys. Let me know what you think. But he did say that this is something, you, you know, like, you guys are looking the wrong way. This is something bigger than you think. She was afraid of somebody. And I was thinking, I don't know, I just got the chills. I was like, oh no. Is she the type of person that stumbled upon something and she knew way too much? Or she saw something she shouldn't have and they got rid of her? Yeah. Ren's family was known to be like a meth family. I'm not just talking about like meth heads you know, even though they kind of were, there is some type of organization crime with that family. Yeah. And this is where I kind of go into like the alleged part. So please, I'm just a woman in a little black box right now talking on YouTube. So you can say what I want, you know, you can take what I say as a grain of salt. Do not come after me. 
Okay. I'm just literally, I just want Samantha's name to stay out there because the family want her to come home. At least they want her body to come home so they can give her a proper burial. When I worked in the uh, restaurant business, I had a regular, I'm just going to say his name is Mike. Okay. And we were talking about Kentucky crimes because I was talking about the case of Karina Mullen. If you guys don't know that case, oh my gosh. I tried to do a little TikTok video on it. I believe it was the sister of Karina. She messaged me and commented on my video that she was absolutely furious that I even had her sister's name in my mouth, you know, like talking about her. And I was just trying to say, well, I, I, I want her to be remembered. You know, I, I researched her sister and she was just a young mother that was just taken away so brutally. And she was not happy me talking about it, which is understandable. I was like, I could never imagine. But um, I don't think she has my YouTube channel, you guys. <laughs> um, I did take off the TikTok video due to respect for her. And what I'm going to say, I'm going to say respect uh, for the family as well. But Karina Mullen uh, was brutally, like, horrifically assaulted. And weirdly, um, the man who assaulted her and the men, yeah, it was horrible. She was only 19 years old, a young mother, and she just overheard something about marijuana in the police department. What she did not know was Karina was working with a very crooked police officer named Billy Fields. Yes. Now, Karina thought she did the right thing going to, um, I guess, her boss and saying that this person was talking about marijuana, but I don't think she knew that Billy Fields had anything to do um, with it. Until one night, Billy Fields picks up this 15-year-old girl, puts her in the police car, and takes her to Karina Mullen's house. Yeah, and horrific things are done in front of this 15-year-old girl. And Billy Fields threatened the girl. Again, I don't know why he brought her and destroyed her life, like, mentally. So what happened after that was he said, you know... Um, it's speculation, even though Karina was brutally stabbed and assaulted, it was so brutal that the 15 year old girl may have been uh, assaulted as well. Yeah, guys, it's, it's, it's bad. There is an episode of, um, Sorry, though, that was Bowie. He's trying to say hi. Okay. So there is an episode, I believe, on unusual suspects or something like that. Some ID show, right? Well, we didn't get Billy Fields until 20-something years later after he retired from the police department. Mm -hmm. And the young 15-year-old uh, grew up to have children and she finally confessed about what she witnessed and what she saw because she realized as a mother she could never ever imagine this happening to her her child so let's get back to mike from the restaurant mike was actually telling me that it goes way way more involved come here bowie come here my baby boy get down baby get down good boy it gets really, really involved. Like, he was saying that he knew about the actual murder of uh, Karina in Kentucky. And he said there's a lot more. And it goes much bigger. And there is something called the Cornbread Mafia. And of course, I'm thinking, that sounds delicious. I love me some cornbread. But without joking aside, it's not delicious. These are like crazy country boy assassins with a whole bunch of roots. Like, Billy Fields was in the marijuana game, right? Now, there is a huge meth problem in Kentucky, even in the Midwest. I feel like there's drug problems everywhere, personally. But 
when he looked at me and he said like, you know, Karina, uh, what happened to her? That's like, did that, that's just like a little bit of what, you know, compared to what exactly is covered up. And I'm like, well, we got the murderer, you know, like, shouldn't that be over? And he goes, no, the cornbread mafia is all around Kentucky and their biggest business is meth and marijuana and drugs. So as I stumbled upon the Samantha Sperry case, and who knows, maybe the boyfriend might be blowing it out of his butt and saying that this is bigger, you know, he's trying to make it into some kind of conspiracy. Who knows? Because I'm going to tell you what, you know, NBC and all them say happened, and it just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, Cornbread Mafia. Isn't that scary? Like what? Yeah, I know. The more you know. March 27th, Ren, okay, Hendrickson, was supposed to go over Samantha's. And there may or may have not been an argument there. Yeah. Again, guys, this is speculation. This is frustrating, okay? So after that happens, weirdly, they go over Ren's dad's place, Dusty. Yeah, Dusty, he a bad dude too. Like I said, the family just, I mean, I, I mean, I don't personally know him, okay? But what I've been researching, they just seem like bad news. They just seem like you don't want to mess with these guys. So, I, it, th this does not make sense to me, but um, apparently Dusty and Samantha go on the four wheel and they just go four wheeling. Yeah. So you're saying the boyfriend's dad takes Samantha. That's my cat's plan. Take Samantha and they go four wheeling and they apparently are gone for a while and they get lost in the woods. Apparently, it rains that night, and they get really lost. It's dark out. They don't know what to do. So, Dusty and Samantha decide to spend the night? What? I know. I, I know. It's weird. It's weird. Okay. Yes. Um, he said that he tried to burn a fire, but due to it being wet wood, they could not have a fire. It's just, it's, it's not math mathing, okay? So, okay, after that, you know, the next day, yeah, we're going to the next day because they claim that it, it's, it's just, it's just weird, okay? It's just weird. So Dusty got lost and the ATV got stuck. So they decided to spend the night on the ATV. I mean, that should, that's got to be very uncomfortable. Maybe he means like spend, spending the night by the ATV. Now, the next morning after they spent the night, they it's around like 7 a.m. maybe, and they're... They find their way, but Samantha goes a different way than where the other guys go. Yeah. Again, my thing is, why did you leave her? Now, he said that he didn't want to argue with Samantha because he was tired and hungry and wet and just like annoyed, you know, being lost in the woods all night. Um, so he didn't argue. So he let her apparently just walk away and she was close to one of the busiest intersections, um, you know, like the highway. And it's around like 7 a.m. So that's like rush hour. Uh, but yet no one has seen her since. No one has seen her at all. Forgive me, guys. I don't know why I said we. It was Dusty and Samantha that apparently spent the night together. Yes, the boyfriend's dad and Samantha. What? What? And you're wondering, well, where is Ren in all this? Oh, he decided to go back to Samantha's home. Yeah, to, to spend the night. He was tired. And he also said he was very high. 
This what? Already, guys, none of this timeline is making sense at all because apparently Ren went into the woods to find Samantha and got lost himself, apparently. And then when he was found, he was extremely dehydrated and hurt. Samantha's family says that this definitely may have been fabricated. There was like no such thing. It is, uh, it's very, very odd. It is. In fact, Ren called his mom saying that he wanted to take his own life. Why would you call your mom after someone, you know, goes missing and says, I want to take my own life? Now, he explains that everyone was high. We all were high, you know, and that's it. I just really want to get high. She wanted to get high. Everybody wanted to get high. And I'm like, okay, Afro man, uh, even though this high is not marijuana high, this is like meth. Like this is, that's a whole different part of you guys. So the mom, you know, Ren's mom is like really, really worried. Like she's like, what? What, what are you talking about? You want to take your own life? What is going on? So pa- apparently when Ren goes in the woods and gets lost, and comes out, he blames the disappearance on his dad. Yep. He says, you know, I hope he didn't do anything to her. I really, really don't. I could, I could tell during the interview, even though when I post it, guys, you're going to see a missing poster of Samantha. You're going to hear him. And he does sound remorseful. I think he does sound like he really cared about Samantha. I think, I think he does. And I think he did. But I also think that he is not telling everything. And he is not telling, he is definitely covering up for someone. And you're wondering, okay, well, Katie, as soon as she was missing, what happened? Did, did the police, were, were they right on it? Were they, no, 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 they weren't. They basically told the family, you know, since she was a known drug addict and she may have relapsed, uh, that she's probably on a bender, an all night bender and to go and, you know, relax pretty much. Not exactly those terms, you guys, but you know, something like that to basically go and just wait until she gets off her bender and she will be back home. But her sister, Kim did not agree. When she found out that Samantha missed her shift at McDonald's, it was a 9 p.m. shift, she was like, oh no, Uh uh-uh. Samantha never misses work. She is not a no-call, no-show kind of person. She actually was a very dependable worker. And because of her being very dependable at work, that made the disappearance blow up. Like all the townspeople were like, where the heck is Samantha? Police? Yeah. I don't want anybody after me, but it just seems like they just did not take it seriously. And they searched apparently days later. It, it, it makes no sense. It, it, it makes absolute no sense. Few miles down the road was Samantha's um, Ford Taurus. It was abandoned. It was by Doom's Chapel. Yeah. So again, nothing is math-mathing here. When the police went to Samantha's home, they did find specks of blood. They did. Now I'm trying to figure out if it's, uh, if they found out whose blood it is. But unfortunately, guys, and this is so sad to say, because of lack of help, and lack of resources, there are so many kits of DNA that are backlogged. So even though we have evidence of DNA, it may be a while before anybody gets some answers. Now, it just doesn't make any sense. And you're thinking, well, okay, how about the men were both taken in? Do they do a poly- poly- excuse me, a polygraph? Yes. Yes, they did. And they passed. Now, I was talking to my partner, George, and he was like, 
I mean, it's not that hard these days. That's why a lot of the cases today, they don't use them anymore. And I was like, okay, good point. It's true. It may be pretty simple to pass one, especially if you're a psychopath, you know, because the way the polygraph works, it basically, you know, it, it measures your heart rate and, you know, how much you're perspirating, like sweating, um, you know, if you're prone to anxiety. Uh, but again, these guys are cut from the same cloth and they are known in the meth game and perhaps uh, police officers are involved too because what's drugs bring guys besides death and heartache? Money. Money, money, money. Now, there may have been blood in her vehicle as well. Again, they're not really looking into it. I think it's, I think it's awful. Um, I'm looking at updated stuff. I saw other podcasts and I'm like blown away. Like, I'm like, this is very odd. I honestly don't think she went in the woods at all, you guys. I don't. I think there was some kind of altercation and her home, and she was dragged there. And you're wondering, well, okay, Katie, that, 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 that's a bit of a stretch. Ooh, let me tell you what I found out about a year later in 2018, what police found. Yeah, you guys are going to be like, what? Okay, remember I told you this family has like a big area, like a big land area of, um, pretty much land. Okay, guys, it's a swampy area, it's trees, and it's a small town, so everybody seems to know everyone. Yeah, the creepiest towns, in my opinion. Um, but that's just me. Nobody, you know, no offense to anybody in Kentucky, because I have friends and stuff. I have friends in all kinds of places, so no disrespect to Kentucky, guys, but Kentucky is known to be corrupted as, like, corruption is real especially when it comes to drugs and money. Now, um, there was a search party going. Now, the family says that police said they've been searching um, these times and this long, and but the family is also saying that, no, they're not. They're saying they're doing things, but nothing is happening. So that's, that's not good. That's not good at all. So back to 2018, a year after the, di the disappearance, I don't know why, I don't know if it was cadaver dogs or something, but police were searching the land and they found a bunker. Yes, you guys, when I think of a bunker, yes, I kind of think about the 1960s um, bunker thing, you know, like where people thought there'd be a war. Oh my gosh, I will correct myself, the Cold War. I am not, I'm sorry, I'm not a history buff. And I also think of Riverdale. Remember Riverdale where like Jughead and Betty and Veronica would be in this like bunker? The bunker was pretty huge and it was completely dug underground. Yes. So when the dog spotted either it was, you know, cadaver or human, police found it and there was an actual fugitive living on the land that was part of the family. Oh, oh, what? So police are thinking, I feel like the good police, you know, the, the cops that really want this solved, are thinking, if there is one bunker here, how many bunkers are on this land that we have not found yet? Yeah. The fugitive got out of jail uh, later, and um, but before he got out of jail... That bunker was empty by the time Samantha Sperry went missing. I, I know, again, guys, speculation, speculation. I mean, I would think there would be some evidence on the four-wheeler, you know, if, if they rode, rode down there and, yeah. Just a four-wheeler getting stuck and then, like, yeah. It gets bizarre because when the, I, I told, I totally missed this part. So when the police saw the four wheeler, something close to the four wheeler guys was like a fire pit of some sort and Dusty's, you know, the, the boyfriend's dad 
there were two burner phones that were his and they were in the fire burned. What? What were on those phones that you were trying to burn? I'm sure his excuse was, we were just trying to make a fire, so I thought I'd burn my phones. No. What? It is so suspicious, you guys. If you are lost on the ATV, if you are lost, you guys, you call for help. Why didn't anyone call for help? They didn't. They did not. Again, missing cases are not my favorite to do at all. Actually, try true crime is not my favorite. That's like kind of sick to say. But it's more upsetting to me because there's there's no evidence, like there's no proof. There's no like, you know, beginning, middle and end. There's no end. And I feel absolutely sorry for this family. Uh, it's, if you want guys, you can donate to the cause because they're trying to make the, um, the, the, the reward you know, to find Samantha bigger and bigger. They're trying to make her stay in the uh, news. In fact, I found this in my email. So thank you very much for the story suggestion. Um, I appreciate you. Uh, But yeah, this is, uh, this is, this may be bigger than Samantha. I mean, we may be dealing with like way more corruption. I mean, I, I, I don't know guys. Like, where was her cell phone? You know what I'm saying? Apparently her cell phone was in her vehicle or at the house. It's weird because I've seen and listened to a couple podcasts and they're giving me different things and articles are giving me different things. So it's very frustrating because you don't know exactly what the truth is. But I do think that she is no longer with us. Because she is the kind of mother that would never leave her kids. She loved her children more than anything in the world. I can feel it. I know it. I want her to be found. I really, really do. And there might be more bunkers on that land. If it took a whole year to find one bunker, there's got to be another one. What do you guys think about this case? I mean, I'm sure you're like, there's a mafia in the Midwest of the United States. I mean, there's crime everywhere, you guys. But then, I don't know, like there's so many deaths and missing people with weird circumstances. Yeah, because apparently the detective or cop that was on this case, uh, he died of natural causes. What? Yeah, natural causes, you guys. So there's a new detective that is like, you know, trying to get stuff done, apparently. Um, but like I said, I don't want to badmouth anybody. Not not because you see one bad person, they're all bad. That's not how the world works. Um, I do believe there are police officers that do care about uh, Samantha Sperry. And they probably can't sleep at night because either they know something or they can't sleep because they don't know anything and it's driving them crazy. Yeah. If you have any information or any tips, it may be anonymously because this is the case I feel where someone knows something. Something's, yeah, open your mouth. Let closure come to this family, please. Unburden your soul. Unburden your heart. The number is 270-247-4501. I will also leave it in the description below. And again, please know that you are loved and you are cherished. And remember, you are doing better than you think. Thank you very much for watching, you guys. Until next time. Oh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm told to say that. It's weird to say, you know? But yeah, hit the subscribe button, the bell for the notifications. And if you have a story, cb at yahoo.com, I will look into it. And my tea today, 
sorry, I drank a lot of it before I even did the podcast. It was just my favorite green tea in my Good Witch mug. So, so delicious. Bye.